The enemy's record October losses, almost 42,000 soldiers or 1,350 on average per day, are explained exclusively by the increase in the number of Russian attacks in combination with the traditional tactics of meat assaults. And this is most likely not the last such record of the occupiers. This opinion was expressed today, November the 11th, on the air of the Freedom TV channel by military analyst Alexei Getman. They continue to carry out attacks regardless of the number of casualties. We call it meat assaults. The number of attacks has increased. The number of casualties has increased. The guest of the broadcast comments. Speaking about the structure of losses, he notes that such tactics of the Russians leave equally little chance of survival for both experienced soldiers and fresh reinforcements, depending on which unit received the command to storm and what the relationships are between the soldiers, servicemen and mid-level commanders. We have heard such news that sometimes they send almost specifically to the slaughter. When professional soldiers attack, already with combat experience, they are better oriented, can move more correctly, cover themselves more correctly. This also does not significantly affect such tactics. If there were another, more, let's say, modern tactics of conducting military operations, then their advance would be more significant and the losses would be less. But they are unlikely to change anything, the military analyst believes. He recalled the battles for the city of Bakhmut in the Donetsk region when, for every 48 centimeters of advance, there was one dead or wounded Russian and stated that the enemy is literally paving his path with its own corpses. And now the Russians are trying to seize as much Ukrainian territory as possible in anticipation of a possible freeze on the front line. Therefore, Getman predicts that the Russian army will break its October loss record. The weather conditions are already a little more difficult for the Russians, and they have exhausted what they prepared for this offensive operation, which began in April to May of this year. Therefore, I think they will strengthen quantitatively. This is not very good for us. We also suffer losses, and it is not so easy to repel these massive attacks. The guest of the broadcast added, Alexei Getman also noted that the losses, no matter how record-breaking they were, and no matter how shocking they were to the civilized world, remain acceptable for the Russian Federation. Fighters of the 95th Airborne Assault Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces have prevented an attack by the 810th Marine Brigade of the Russian Army in Russia's Kursk region. The invaders, who attacked with dozens of armored vehicles near the forest strip and the lake, were struck by artillery and drones. As a result, at least 28 military equipment and more than 100 servicemen were destroyed, hundreds of servicemen were injured. The surviving invaders tried to escape by fleeing from the battlefield.
Ukraine launched a large-scale drone strike on Moscow on Sunday, hours after Vladimir Putin signed a strategic partnership deal with North Korea. Ukrainian drones rattled Moscow and its suburbs overnight into Sunday, injuring several people and temporarily halting traffic at some of Russia's busiest airports, officials reported. The agreement signed between Moscow and Pyongyang earlier on Saturday night obliges the two countries to provide immediate military aid using all means if either is attacked. Meanwhile, a huge nighttime wave of Russian drones targeted Ukraine. Earlier this week, Ukraine reported that its troops engaged for the first time with North Korean units. Both Moscow and Kiev have kept a tight lid on casualty figures. However, the chief of the UK defense staff, Tony Radikin, told the BBC that Russian forces had suffered their worst month of casualties in October since the full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. According to Radikin, ordinary Russians were paying an extraordinary price for the war. Radikin insisted that Ukraine's Western partners should stand by it for as long as it takes to beat back Russian aggression, even as allies of US President-elect Donald Trump have signaled that Kiev may have to cede territory to seek peace. On Sunday, the Kremlin's official spokesman voiced cautious optimism about Trump's upcoming presidency, saying, at least he talks about peace. He does not talk about confrontation. But Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Sunday insisted that strong decisions from Kiev's Western partners are needed to stop the terror of Russian drone and missile strikes and secure reliable peace for Ukraine. Fierce fighting has continued near the eastern Ukrainian cities of Toritsk and Kurakov, Ukraine's general staff reported Sunday. Between 700 and 1,000 residents remain in Kurakov, a frontline city surrounded on three sides and battered into ruin. Meanwhile, Russia's defense ministry said a total of 84 Ukrainian drones were shot down overnight in Russian territory, following what it called a mass strike on civilian infrastructure. A man died under rubble after drones struck his apartment block in Russia's Belgorod region, just kilometers from the Ukrainian border, local governor Vyacheslav Gladkov reported. Five other people were injured in the Moscow suburb of Romensko and a nearby village, according to local officials. Russia's aviation authority said flights were briefly grounded at major international airports including Sheremetyevo and Domodedovo. Ukraine's general staff claimed on Sunday that Ukrainian drones caused a fire at an arms depot in Russia's southern Bryansk region, near Ukraine and Belarus. The online update featured a photo showing thick plumes of reddish smoke rising into the night sky. Separately, Russia's emergencies ministry on Sunday said that a major fire broke out at a warehouse outside of Moscow. Russia overnight launched a record 145 drones at Ukrainian territory, according to Ukraine's air force, 62 of which were shot down.